Hello my friends and welcome to a brand new playthrough series of Distant Worlds. We're going to flip things around, as you know my channel is all about the micromanager of this game, but this time we are going to do some automation. Because we are going to be playing by policy, so I will be controlling the policies, uh, the character locations, and the intelligence missions. That's about all we're doing, and I made a few uh, things, a few changes on this screen as well. Uh, the default attack overmatch when you install Distant Worlds is 2 to 1. And as soon as I install the game, I throw that to 3 to 1. This just ensures that the AI will bring enough ships to do whatever they need to do. For this particular playthrough, I'm going to go 5 to 1. And we'll do that. And that's going to be our settings for the game. Uh, all automated, pretty much. And uh, we're going to do the ship designs as well. But I'm going to leave that checked on because I'm not going to do all the designs. I'm just going to do like the uh, military. Uh, I'd probably leave just the private sector on auto designs. But uh, that is enabled regardless. Okay, so how are we going to set up the game? We'll talk a bit more about the gameplay style once we get into it, but let's just get the game set up. <clears throat> and we'll start as a standard empire. And once again, we'll go with a spiral 1400 15 by 15 galaxy. And we're going to start starting. We're not doing pre-warp this time. We're going to get going. Uh, Aggression is going to be normal. Difficulty normal. Our uh, research cost I was going to put to normal, but things were just a bit too quick, so I bumped them up to expensive. Going to leave uh, space creatures on many, pirates on very many, and normal. And I'm trying to keep the game as normalized as possible, just because uh, I'm only going to be using Harry 78's extended universe, because I want the game to be as vanilla as possible. I don't want uh, weird things like the bacon mod or the AI improvement doing stuff. Uh, I want the base game AI to be playing this, so I'm running with very few mods. Harry 78's mod doesn't really change the core gameplay mechanics at all. So that's why I'm going with that. Just to give us a little more flavor. Otherwise, I would just go strictly vanilla. So that's just going to give us a bit more variety in the races we encounter and everything. So uh, with the pirates cranked up to very many, pirates are not going to be an issue in this game. They're just going to be a non-thing really once we get going. Uh, so because I have them on very many, I've nerfed the independent alien life right back to rare. And that's going to keep the pirates actually nipped back quite a bit. Because that's the, the independent alien life is really where they get most of their income. So they're not going to be much of a problem. That's why I got them cranked right up. I don't want a huge amount of independent colonies just because of the way I'm setting the game up. I'm, uh, I've uh, actually run this game quite a few times just to see how things are going. And I think I got it to somewhat of a balance slash threatening level, <laughs> if that makes any sense. We'll see more about that as we progress. Uh, the race... Oh, just one more thing here. Uh, I've increased the calling colonization to 1.5, well, 1.55 sectors, but uh, I've increased that up from one where I usually have it. Uh, the race I'm going to pick is the Akuru. I don't recall ever playing a hardcore playthrough of these guys. It's kind of the reason I picked them is because I don't really recall doing anything with them. I've played them before here and there, but I've never really done a serious playthrough with them. So I figured I'd pick them. Just a vanilla race is all I wanted. Um... They're quite uh, aggressive and everything. We'll look at them more once we get into the game, but they do come with a special technology, the S2F7 repair bot, and we get that immediately in the game. So that's uh, actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good item to have on all our ships. And we get faster construction as well. So that's our race. Uh, I'm gonna let the game name us. Eventually we will rename. Uh, I'm not sure what it'll be, but I'll let the game name us for now. Uh, sometimes it comes up with some cool names, which we might end up staying with, so. Uh, everybody in the game is going to start with an excellent uh, home system, so everybody will be able to uh, get going really quick, really fast. Uh, size will be starting, tech level is normal, and corruption is normal again. And I picked a nice middle of the road uh, the government, which is monarchy. It doesn't give us too much of anything other than a bit of a buff to troop recruitment and uh, war weariness. That's all it gives us. Um, as far as special governments in the game, um, I'll get into that one maybe once we get in the game and I'll uh, let you know what my plans are with that as well so other empires we have uh, this one always flips back to something else i want that at average we have uh, 12 aggressive races 11 passive races and what is it four random races which will be starting anywhere plus we have two superpowers on the map yeah, we got four random races which will start anywhere so we could end up with a race right in our home system with us so that might uh, create an interesting start, but uh, I've had only had that happen once in my test games. 
But we have the Keepers and the Shadow Realm in the game as well. And these are very ancient races, as we know, the Shakturi and the Mechanoid. Uh, they have uh, opposing government styles, Way of the Ancient, Way of Darkness. And they're going to be starting just like us with one, one system and everything. But they both start with a level 4 technology. Uh, I was trying to start them off with like all the tech, but wow, they just overrun the entire map in no time. So these are going to be super, super threatening uh, races for everybody in the game. Uh, basically, I've started the Keepers way down at the bottom of the map, and I've started the Shadow Realm way up at the top of the map. And as galactic history uh, goes, uh, there was a huge war like 10,000 years ago where both of these races uh, fought each other relentlessly and wiped out everything in the middle, which is all the other races. So at this point, all the other races are just kind of making their way back into spacefaring and all that kind of stuff. So... It was a devastating time, and it's about to kick up again, as we will see. Uh, victory conditions, once again, it's just basically sandbox, 100% of everything. Uh, I've disabled the original storylines, uh, so there'll be no planet destroyers or uh, debris fields in the game. There will be planet-destroying technology. The Lemurish actually have that technology, so that it is in the game to destroy planets, but that's going to be way off, and who knows how that'll go. Uh, we might end up with a technology. Somebody else might end up with a technology. We'll have to wait and see how that works. Uh, so no Shaktari storylines or Shadow storylines either. I've left the disasters and the race-specific events in. And we're going to allow tech trading. Uh, the AI will be doing all that. I won't be engaging in it at all. So that's kind of what we're looking at. It should be interesting. I found it quite interesting to play this way, but like I said, I'm not sure if it's going to be very engaging to watch, but we're, we'll get into it for a handful of episodes anyways and just see how the reaction is. Uh, this is going to be very hands-off compared to the way I usually play, so you guys might not enjoy it as much, but we'll, uh, we'll try it out. Uh, it's, if nothing else, it's a way to showcase alternate gameplay. So I'm just going to grab a drink of coffee before we get going here. Ooh, which is very hot. Ooh. Okay, we are the Akuru Dominion. And we are the ruler of the Akurus, and we have a government of monarchy. And just a heads up, there probably won't be any gameplay in this episode. It's going to be episode zero. So if you're not interested in anything I'm going to be saying here, I'll put a, as much in the description, uh, the video descriptions as I can about what we're doing. So if you want to skip this episode, you probably can. Although you'll probably miss out on uh, what all the setups are, but we'll see. So I'm just going to hit start playing and immediately, as with any Distant Worlds game, we're going to pause. And we'll just zoom out and see what we're looking at here. We have a home system that has four planets, one moon. Not great, unfortunately. Zoom out a little further and we are in a nice little cluster here. So we already know that there's a massive threat way down here somewhere. And there's another massive threat way up here somewhere. And everybody else is going to be stuck in the middle. And they will go to war, let me tell you. I have, like I said, I've uh, done quite a few startup uh, balancing and uh, test plays of this uh, scenario, so it should be fine. It's definitely going to end in disaster, <laughs> one way or the other. Okay, so what are we looking at? Well, let's take a look at our race for a second. We are the Akuru. And I won't read through all this, but basically we're uh, very intelligent and aggressive and all that kind of stuff. And we like to uh, re reverse engineer stuff and uh, we're quite uh, mechanically adept and all that kind of thing. Uh, we have uh, uh, developed the S2F7 repair bot, which, like I said, we get right out of the gate and it'll be on our initial designs and everything. And uh, we have a fairly high reproductive rate, 16%. It's not great, but it's sort of middle of the road on the higher end. And we're quite everything, quite aggressive, cautious, unfriendly, intelligent, and dependable. Got a few bonuses, uh, ship maintenance, troop maintenance, and a bit of all colony income buff by 10%. Special resources, Magellus Nut will help us grow faster, so we hopefully we'll find a bit of that right out the gate. But uh, generally we don't, we have to source that out. It's a pretty rare uh, luxury. Lead, uh, which is available everywhere, will give us a development bonus. And a Sally of 5 strength bonus to all our troops. Uh, race condition, conditions won't uh, victory conditions won't worry about too much, and a bit of a bit of a buff or a hit to all our colonization technology. It's ten percent for us to uh, research just about every other colonization other than continental. And there's our repair bot, and we also have construction speed of twenty five percent. So that's what our race is all about. All right, um, let's see, what should we go for first? I guess we'll talk about how we're going to play the game. I think that's probably the best place to start. 
So the only thing I'm going to be controlling, and I'll go through it maybe in this order, uh, I'm going to be controlling the characters. So intelligence agent will be doing all the intelligence ourselves. And we do have a counterintelligence guy, so hopefully he'll uh, have a nice intel uh, espionage trait as well. Uh, let's see what our ruler is like. A little bit of red, but not bad. You'll get some more traits as we go. And I will be taking names. Make a comment somewhere, and I will be taking names. However, the leader, I've noticed, gets replaced like all the time. So I'm not even going to bother uh, naming him anything other than Montezuma. Yeah, so I'm not going to take uh, viewer names to rename the leader because, yeah, I, he gets he gets uh, replaced so often that I'm not even going to bother with it. We'll just rename him Montezuma 2, 3, 4, whatever. But everybody else I'll uh, assign names to. So we'll uh, take care of that manually as well. Um, the only trouble with this, because I'm going to have the AI taking care of my military, is troop generals. I have to watch our, tr our fleets and what they're doing. If they're off to invade somewhere, i got to make sure I put my troop general on those ships. Or else we're going to be running around with no troop generals. Uh, same with fleet admirals. I'll have to make sure they're uh, sorted out too. And ship captains and all that crap we'll have to worry about as well. Uh, another thing we're going to be doing manually is ship designs. And I often theorize that you could win a game just by manually designing ships and letting the AI do everything else. So this is kind of a, a work up towards that anyways. But... Uh, I'm going to select all designs, all types, and I am just going to quickly go through and obsolete all these because I have actually buffed up some designs and I'm not going to do them on camera. I'm just going to load them in. I did this in a previous uh, test game, so save us a little bit of time. So I've obsoleted everything in the game and I am going to load in our policy play. And I also have one for a bit later too, so I don't have to sit and design all those either. That's just a basic design thing. So I'm going to open up that. And then we'll go back to non-obsolete designs, and here we go. The only thing I'm not going to design is the private sector. We'll let the, uh, the AI take care of that. And everything else uh, will be us. So if we go to state, design, oh, state ships, and uh, as you can see, I have done all our usual protectors, borders, rangers, and all that, even though I don't have the technology for boarding, or I don't think, think we have, uh, oops, I don't even think we have uh, missile technology. No, we don't. We're just researching it now. So the only weapons we have are torpedoes and railguns. So basically all these designs are just torpedoes and railguns. So they don't really actually are borders or rangers yet. But as soon as we get the technology, we'll replace everything and get those actually doing what they're supposed to do. Uh, drop ships we can't build yet because we only have 230 construction size and I think we should be yes we are we're, we're uh, researching enhanced construction now so we're going to get bigger ship sizes shortly so we should have that before we need any kind of drop ship and we already have our damage control in our uh, unique uh, repair bot as I mentioned before so basically, and I also have a temp battleship and a temp cruiser. We can't build any of those yet. I just sort of included those in my manual design. So if we go down to latest buildable, they disappear. So we can't build any of that yet. So yeah, this is basically the base designs, but with more stuff on them. I'll just come in here quickly. Uh, the protector or the initial escorts started with two Maxis blasters. That was it. So basically all I've done is to these designs is I've just added more. So there's nothing unique, nothing special, no bells and whistles, just more of what was already on them. Same with the borders, same with rangers. So once we get missiles, I'll immediately uh, retrofit to get missiles on the rangers and boarding assault on our borders. But we will be taking control of all of that except for the private sector. Okay, what else are we going to be uh, controlling? Well, play by policy. That means we're going to be playing the game through the screen. So we're going to be influencing what the AI does to everything, and we're just all whack of stuff in here to set. But basically, uh, for instance, let's uh, have a look at our explorers. So right now the AI has built seven explorers, and that figures it figures that's all it needs right now. However, we can influence the AI to build more. If we come down to economy and trade, we can see exploration priority is normal. If we throw that onto very high, and apply that policy the minute we start up and when the AI decides it's a good time to do it it's going to throw a bunch more explorers and in, into the queue and build those so that's basically how play by policy is going to work and we can pretty much set up a lot of the Empire through the screen 
And it's kind of interesting to watch your, uh, we're basically influencing the AI. We're not really directly controlling it, but we're just telling it, hey, you might want to build some more explorers, or you might want to maybe prioritize tourism because, well, more money, right? So we can do that kind of stuff. Then we just apply it and carry on. So uh, we'll go through this just quickly. I won't change anything we're not going to even worry about right now, but uh, willingness to go to war, I'm going to set that to lower for now. Um, intelligence, we're going to be actually controlling manually, but say if I did have it automated and I didn't want to, I want to make sure all our intelligence goes out and does missions and everything, I could say, don't keep anybody on counterintelligence. Just send everybody out always. You could change that to any time, and they would uh, send out and do these various missions. If we didn't want to destroy base, we could uncheck that. So that's how we could do that, but we are actually going to be controlling that. But that's just an example of what we can do. Uh, colonization, I'm going to leave because the only technology we have is continental. So it's going to be very high, but I will establish a new colony with a new troop. So as soon as we establish a new colony, we get an immediate troop on the ground. And there's another setting further down, which we can en enhance that with. We could al also come in and go, ah, pull a small spaceport as soon as we settle a new planet too. That creates problems unfortunately it creates uh, shortages which creates unhappiness so we really don't want to do that right away again there's a setting lower down where we can actually define all that and uh, here's where we uh, do our assimilation or slavery and everything that's our population policies there so we'll be controlling that as well but we'll just leave it on assimilate for now uh, facility building we can say what buildings uh, get built or facilities get built and what population levels need to be uh, satisfied before we actually build them uh, we won't worry about that right now. Colony taxes, uh, anything below 200 million people, zero taxes, encourage growth for sure. Uh, Medium-sized stuff, uh, I'm going to drop down to low. So we will encourage growth and uh, tax them a little bit, basically. And then anything large, like our home planet, which has 20 billion people on it to start, uh, will tax high. We don't really need to right now. Cash flow is actually pretty good, 55 grand. So I might just maybe encourage a little bit of growth. We'll keep it at normal for now. And the normal setting pretty much keeps this in the happiness of, uh, the, in the realm of happy. So it'll go to 15 or 16 here and then tax appropriately, which is usually goes down about the teens somewhere. So that's how we can control our taxes. Now research and design, and just give me a sec to grab a drink. My mouth is getting a bit dry. A lot of talking. Uh, research priority. Um, okay, so basically here we can set up what kind of uh, research stations we build and how fast we build them. So basically, I right out the gate, I only want like our spaceport and one of each uh, research research station. So I'm going to actually set priority to very high so it's going to prioritize research uh, station building over top of mining stations and everything so I'm going to go very high so it'll actually get this done fairly soon uh, area focus I'm going to keep on balanced uh, if I wanted to spike our energy uh, research I could do that and then it would build like maybe more energy labs than it would actually uh, weapons or high tech but I think I want to keep that at balance for now and our overall focus, I think we're going to go with speed and agility. Um, hyperdrives, uh, impulse engines, that sort of thing, I think is a good, good uh, overall focus for us. Um, okay, and then we can emphasize what we want the AI to focus on as far as, uh, as research. And we can see we're doing missiles, construction, and countermeasures at the moment. So we could set up a bunch of stuff. Uh, we already have damage control, so we really don't need to be concentrating on that. We could go up another level in it, but yeah, I think we'll go with something else. So right out the gate, I think I'll put two of these on weapons research, two of them on energy, and two of them on high tech, just to sort of keep everything sort of balanced. And right out the gate, you know, I like my rail guns, so we're going to go for some rail guns. Um, and other weapons I like to get is assault pods, so we're going to we're just basically influence or emphasizing these areas. If the AI feels that it needs to do something else like ground troops, it's going to in, just, just going to ignore us and do what it thinks it needs to do. But we're going to influence what it does next. Uh, it might interrupt these two things to go do something else. But uh, we'll uh, see what it does at that point. So we're going to set the next two to energy and construction. Uh, again, we'll maybe get some faster hyperdrives and maybe some faster thrust engines. 
and then two for the high tech um we're already doing countermeasures so maybe we'll do target tracking and some sensors so if the ai doesn't have anything else prioritized it's going to work on this stuff and we can uh, swap these around like once we get on rail guns we can maybe swap that out to be i don't know fighters or something and from my experience the ai once it picks a research will not change it doesn't stop halfway through to go to shipboarding or anything like that so once it picks a research it carries through to the next one and we will just find the next ones okay so prompt retrofit uh that's fine we're not uh, we'll be having the ai do all that and automatically upgrade fighters to latest which is uh done by the ai as well these are ship designs that are automatically created for us uh, there's only a few because we've got everything on manual right now we did that when we went into this screen here put all these upgrades to manual and of course the oops and every time we go into this screen it resets and just let me find it where we were so all these that have been set to manual do, are not checked. They're still carriers and resupply ships. I simply don't have the tech to actually design those yet. So I'm going to get the AI design the first one, and then we'll tweak it out from there. So you can set up what you don't want designed and what you do want designed. Um, as you can see, the private sector here is all checked to be auto automatically designed. Uh, monitoring stations, star bases, which I don't really bother with anyway, so that's fine. All right, so down to construction, military construction level. I'm going to throw that to low for the moment. We don't need to be coming out the gate too heavy. And then we proportionalize our fleets or our military through this these settings here. All of this adds up to 100%. So this tells us that we want 8% transports, 8% carriers, 18% uh, escorts. We can tweak this out. Say we don't want 8% transports. We'll just pop that down to 5. So that gives us 3% to spend elsewhere. Maybe we want 10% carriers. And then maybe throw another point on escorts there. So we can uh, sort of proportionalize our military this way. And minimum distance between new spaceports I'm setting to zero. I just, if we want to build a spaceport, just build it. I don't care. Uh, minimum population for a new spaceport. Now remember up top we wanted, we were looking at that drop down where we could immediately build a small spaceport. We don't want to do that because it would create problems. So we're going to set that to 100 million. So it'll grow up a bit and settle itself down. Uh, private sector will be able to bring resources over. It'll sort of build up a bit by the time it gets to 100 million. And then uh, once it, this is minimum population, it might wait till 300 million before it builds one. We'll have to wait to see what the AI wants to do. Uh, medium spaceport, I'm going to put a requirement of 2 billion. And for a large, a 5 billion. And that should uh, dictate how those get built. And up top, we uh, checked off um, uh, an option to immediately build a troop once we uh, colonize a planet. And here we can say minimum troop per colony. I'm going to pop to two for now. We'll pop, we'll hop this up a bit more later. And this overrides this setting here, uh, which I'm not going to use. Uh, it just says don't recruit troops until a population reaches such and such. But uh, I find this just the two is fine. Special Forces and Planetary Defense. We don't want to be so heavy on those, so I'm going to drop the priority of those down to low, and we'll leave everything else to normal for now. And we don't need to worry too much else about anything on that screen, because the AI will use its troop uh, loadouts. That's fine. We could adjust that if we want. A war and attacks, we won't worry about till we're actually at war. Boarding and capture, we'll just maybe say always capture, and yeah, we might as well upgrade to the latest designs. And then we can take our military and we can say that we want 70% of our military to be in fleets. So it'll assemble 70% of our ships into fleets. And typical number of fleets in the, or ships in the fleet is 15 and strike forces is four. We'll pop those numbers up as we go. So let's apply all that. All right, what else do we need to do? Let's maybe pop in and have a look here for a sec. Uh, there's our monarchy. War weariness minus 30, troop recruitment plus 25, but we're normal across the board. So I pretty much wanted a nice a medium government to play this out with. Um, one other thing we want to do, I'm not going to start the game with stock designs. These are all the, uh, the uh, AI designs, and I'm not too happy with those. So we want to upgrade everything right now to our designs that we loaded in. So we got all our ships and bases loaded. We have one medium spaceport, which we will retrofit to our medium regional port. Uh, we have some escorts. Now, this screen, you can only retrofit what's not in a fleet. 
uh, you have to come out and retrofit the fleet in order for that to take. So I'll just do the escorts for now in here and we'll come out and we'll do the actual fleet from another screen. Uh, we'll upgrade our es uh, explorers. We'll get that done. We, the construction ships don't take from the screen for whatever reason. We'll have to come out and do that in another spot. Uh, gas mining stations, we will definitely upgrade because I did uh, hop those designs up a bit. Mining stations as well. We'll retrofit those. I just want to start the game with our designs. And then we have the private sector, which will do its own thing. That's fine. And we have to come out here to do our retrofits on our construction ships, like I said. So we'll just get that done quickly. And we'll do our fleet as well. And we'll just send you in for retrofit. There we go. And let's see, is there anything else we need to do before we get going here? I'm probably not, I'm not starting up the game before uh, the second episode. This will be episode zero, so uh, we're just sort of doing the game setup at this point. Uh, we got a decent start in area. There's some uh, good cluster here. Um, we're going to be surrounded. There are 30, 30 empires on this map, so we're probably going to be like hemmed in like pretty pretty uh intensely here we're probably going to have an empire here an empire here over here in here so expansion is pretty tricky um yeah so that's what we're going to be doing and that is the pretty much the setup i don't think i need to do anything else um i will record a couple episodes now and then uh, once they play out i'll get some names from the uh, comments and we'll start renaming stuff so for now, I'm just going to leave everything defaulted with their names and everything. We'll rename Homeworld, and uh, I'm just going to basically name characters. And I'm thinking systems, so that uh, we have viewer names out here, and maybe planets. I don't think I'm going to worry about ships, fleets, or anything like that, because they're just too disposable. Very hard for me to keep track of as far as whose name's being used and everything as well. So I think we'll do it that way. I'm pretty sure I don't need to cover anything else. I think we're pretty... Oh, 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 nope. There's one other thing I got to do that I noticed in my last playthrough. I uh, got to come into our three capital, uh, three port designs here. I noticed that if we find a, a small spaceport somewhere, which we normally do, I noticed in our uh, test runs, uh, it'll upgrade to our spaceport. And unfortunately... The spaceports I designed don't have any cargo capacity, which is no problem as long as it's above a colony. However, some of these uh, that we find out and about in asteroid fields and that, once I upgrade to our designs, that's it. I can't upgrade any further because I have no cargo capacity. We need cargo capacity in order to do the upgrades. So I'm just going to sort by category and name so I can find stuff. And I am going to add a handful of cargo bays, just five. It doesn't have to be much as long as it's something. So I'm just going to quickly do that to these designs before we get going. And I've already, oh, I'm going to have to retrofit or manually design because I've already retrofitted this. Um, and the AI will retrofit it again. So I'm not too worried about that. Standard cargo, just a handful of those. Thank you. And our capital port as well. Just edit that one. I'm not going to worry too much about keeping the, the mark system in line like I usually do. Um, the AI is taking care of everything anyways. And we need a bit of life and hab for that one. Okay, and that should get us out the gate and up and running anyways. So there we are. There's our uh, introductory episode to our brand new series of Distant Worlds. And I'm not sure how it's going to go over. Uh, it's fairly, I found it fairly engaging to play. But again, whether it's going to be engaging to watch, I'm not sure. But if nothing else, I present to you another way to play the game. So if you're still with me and you're interested in this series, I'm glad to have you along. And we will catch you next time.